guys, welcome to a, another commentary done by Diggity, upper left-hand corner. Upper left-hand corner, we have Aegis starting as the Teal Zerg. Bottom left-hand corner, we have Naklar starting as the Brown Protoss. This is on Vermeer, much more oriented map, and might favor Aegis's play style, just because we have seen him play, see, uh, go for more passive options. Oh, I need to update the score. Hopefully this, it might black screen you guys for a second here, but hopefully not, and it'll just be okay. So Aegis took game one. Not, not a dash, not a Q, a one. There we go. There we go. Ooh. Ah, okay, we're back. Um, Naklar's tournament life on the line here, so desperately needs a win. We'll see if he's got something new. Honestly, I feel like if Naklar... I, I really want to see someone look at the replay and punish Aegis for the early lack of gas and maybe go for just a Corsair opener. Uh, with plus one weapons upgrade, maybe even double Stargate. I think that would end it pretty rapidly. Uh, we'll see if... Looks like he's waiting to go ahead and drop a gateway. Usually that's the thing when you have the probe hanging around. Yeah, so gateway opener on a four-player map. Overlord making its way across that nine o'clock base. Unfortunately, Naklar sending the probe the wrong direction to get the early scout. So the initial zealot might not know the best direction to head. Looks like we have an overpool once again from Aegis, and I would not be shocked to see again three base before gas. People in chat are currently discussing. Oh, the probe actually, upon not seeing the overlord here at the six o'clock, opting to change direction. So Naklar is going to end up with first scout and he's going to get the spawning pool timing as well. Very nice. And might even get some disruption on the... Well, though he's not trailing the drone. But... Yeah, able to confirm that spawning pool timing. So first up in production. Let's see if he sends it or just keeps it back. People in chat are discussing NVMe based on uh, previous discussions as far as transfer whatnot. Um, I won't get into that because that's a huge distraction. Unless you guys really want me to. Let me know in comments if you're like, nope, I really want to hear discussion of hardware and all that sort of stuff. You know, I might, <clears throat> I am going to give a side comment. I'm a little bit shocked with the cloud and things that everything hasn't just turned into a terminal that accesses cloud storage remote someplace. Especially considering how like you can basically get an entire operating system and BIOS in like a web browser anyway. And nobody cares about security these these days, it feels like. Uh, but anyway, neither here nor there. First sell it, making its way up alongside with that probe and with the Zerglings that are actually completely exiting. Looks like they want to go for a counterattack. We do have the Nexus warping in behind this. Now they're turning back around and additional Zerglings produced. Zealots grouping up with that probe. Unfortunately, the probe going after minerals now able to get a turnaround kill. A drone really wanted to get mixed in and both players having trouble controlling the units. I'm kind of curious how much lag this has played. And unfortunately, the Zerglings engaging the Zealot and the probe, which is just giving it bonus kills. So three kills already. I think there is a drone that kept moving back and forth and was trying to drone drill. Second Zealot in the front, able to get a drone kill there. We do have that three base opening play once again. Naklar not able to get this Zealot into a defensible position, but has forced a lot of Zergling production early. Nice little move back there by Aegis to have the wounded Zergling take the rear and heal up. Only two Zerglings remaining on the hunt, however, which... Potentially he's going to, well, if that Zealot turns around and attacks, looks like it was, oof, not the best move command. Right now it's turned into a scouting Zealot. So now you know what it feels like to be a probe Zealot. Humiliating, embarrassing. That was weird. It's like the top, the very top is clipped off on my monitor. I'm curious if it'll be clipped off in the recording as well. Is this, is that because of, no, that's just weird. Interesting. What if I zoom out? No, it's still clipped. Interesting. All right. I feel like I'm a little bit... Less serious in this cast today for some reason. Gateways warping in. Again, lack of a Stargate. So two gateways to follow. Aegis is going to be able to wander in and confirm it. The Zerglings making their way towards the front. This time we do see Zerglings, or Zerglings, we see drones holding on gas. I'm wondering if this indicates that Aegis is in fact thinking on going more of a conservative or a standard opener. The Zerglings noting the lack of cannon. Assaulting the gateway, the Zelt's coming off the line to defend it immediately. And the Overlord, yeah, just camped. He's like, okay, if you don't have any anti-air, I'm just going to watch the Zealot production out of the two gates. 
Naklar, uh, I feel like Naklar has been kind of playing it a little bit, not really following the standard build order uh, stuff. He's got the Sabinetic score, but really refuses to build the Stargate, which is really advantageous for Aegis's opening build. So again, yeah, the drone's off gas, fourth, and I'm going to guess a quick fifth hatchery going to be on the bucket list soon to be evolved or morphed. Citadel of Adun warping in, and again, yeah, Naklar trying to hide that tech, but again, without even a Dragoon to assault it, Overlord just moves out, moves right back in, and confirms the information. This time, some Zealots making their way across. It's great additional havoc. This is way earlier than the plus one weapons, and let's see if all of them get dedicated. Maybe, looking at the replay, it was kind of a note of a lack of defense. This should force a lot of Zerglings to be produced, or Hydalus, potentially. Sunken Colony's not going to be ready in time, so this could be a lot of damage as the Zealots march in, especially depending on positioning. Yeah, nice spread there. Sunken Colony finishes, but it's going to immediately get surrounded by Zealots. Drones pulling off the line. Naklar not bothering with the Sunken Colony, instead focusing on actually getting back across the lines. Aegis now forced to, def to defend his own ramp with drones. And wow, the Zelts continue to push up. They are able to target the drones. There's just a lot of clutter here in between. Aegis defending this admirably, but this is a lot of economic damage. You can see where he's at the 16 drone count compared to a much larger drone count. So a lot of havoc wreaked and it looks like additional something colonies being dropped at location. So he's gonna have a much weaker economy to follow this up. Third gateway being planted. A lot of gateways. Templar Archives. So we're going to see a five gateway mid game before plus one weapons is even finished. The Zerglings streaming across, maybe wanting, recognizing, okay, there's not a lot of Zealots otherwise. I don't know this if this is going to be sufficient to deal with the cannons, however, and Aegis doesn't think so either, so backing off. Templar Archives morphing in. And kind of a pylon blockade being uh, constructed. Drones back on gas. Aegis does have some catch-up to do. It looks like he's working on those Hydralis upgrades. And let's see if he gets that drone count up once again. Zergling's making sure that a sneaky base wasn't grabbed anywhere out in location. Pylons towards the rear. The other thing that's kind of the opposite direction, the lack of Stargate at play and the lack of early layer is Aegis is also dropping opportunities to, in the mid-game here to have the quick Muta switches and uh, to be able to, because there is no cannon coverage back here, and he still honestly might have been able to pull something like that out. Uh, Zealots, oof, in huge numbers, making the way across. Plus one weapons is now finished. Zealot leg speed going to be finished as well. So kind of a delayed, usually you'll see this around the 7.30 mark, but now it's going to be 8 minutes and 10 Zealots. Going to force more units out. Aegis capped, actually supply capped himself here at 45. The Zealots... Don't like the two something colonies to the north. The Zerglings surrounding the something colonies to the south. And they're just starting to hammer that Hydral stand out in the front. More Zealots marching up as well. Zerglings scattering. I don't know that they're going to be able to save that Hydral stand. A lot of Zealots actually getting wiped out here. But they don't care. They're, they're, they just want to take down the tech. Hydral stand down. So big mid game and just going to retreat after that. So mid-game tech once again hit, and Aegis back to the Stone Age. Although the Stone Age for Zerg is uh, quite advanced compared to other civilizations. Plus one spines being upgraded still. Another Hydral Sten is going to be required. I don't know if that was exactly worth it, but is going to delay things a little bit. And Naklar should feel a little bit more confident, especially with the gateway presence he's got. Um, although it looks like he's cut probe production for quite some time. Is he just going to try to do this on straight Zealot? pressure from I think this is it he's just okay he's got Dark Templar on the front I think he wants to just try to finish the game here in the mid game with, with Zealot Floods once again starting to work on that Hydra stem Dark Templar getting picked off as there's plenty of detection and the Sunken Colonies have not been touched behind this so more units being thinned out for Naklar still not making any motions to go ahead and you have a Zergling actually camped here at the six o'clock yeah, I think Naklar just wants to apply constant pressure and try to win it from here because he's no longer building probes. Actually grabbing a second gas and adding additional gateways and another forge. Also, looks like gonna attack on some Dragoons. Maybe not. 
but certainly he hasn't made any movements to grab after the Hydralis take, uh, then stab anything else. He hasn't made any movements to grab an additional base. Aegis continuing to shell up, finally grabbing a second extractor, adding another macro hatch. Does have layer tech now. And let's see if he wanders out and goes ahead. Previously, we saw him grab a base. High Templar joining the attack. I believe Sidestorm has been upgraded, which is going to make this natural expansion a lot harder to defend. As you can see where a Sidestorm or two could obliterate the support forces for Aegis. Regardless, yeah, a lot of... Still a lot of melee in this. Let's see if it again just... That's a full control group of Zealots. Some support Dragoons as well. Hydalus moving out, looking to pick off the High Templar. Not quite able to. Aegis is better... Eats a little bit of a Psy Storm. Not the best Psy Storm. Actually, is able to force the Psy Storms out, which is going to make that... And also pick off at least one of the High Templar, which is going to make that natural expansion defense somewhat easier. A lot of units gathering up towards the third. Third gas being grabbed. So I'm curious if Aegis is going to make his way all the way to Hive Tech here. Off the three bases. The Hydralis is making their way towards the natural, looking to cut off reinforcements, swinging back around. I believe they have plus one weapons, yeah. So a few Hydralisks being dropped, but forcing repositioning. Now Naklar moving that probe out finally is actually even in the overall probe count. Losing that probe, maybe feeling like, yeah, that bust wasn't such a good idea and maybe kicking up probe production again, although it's still been very, very light. Plus one armor being researched. We already have plus two weapons. Naklar has managed to, in the previous matches, have that upgrade advantage. Currently does as well, and maybe at risk of having that army being flanked as going to engage the troops, staging outside the natural. Pushing up, he does have a solid Psy Storm, which he can drop, but there's not a lot of the troops, so Psy Storming the Sutton Colony, which does no damage to it, doesn't get a lot else out of it. The Hydra's pouring into a 6 o'clock base, which is non-existent. Hydralis migrating between both locations. Now the Dragoons trying to group up on top of the Sutton Colonies and wipe them out, finally. The Sutton Colonies were critical for the defenses early. Emergency Sutton Colonies being dropped in the rear. The Dragoons trying to stave off the reinforcements for Aegis, but it looks like Aegis is going to be able to repel this attack, although having to pull off some drone mining at his natural expansion not much of a hit for him, though, because he's still ahead in the overall worker count. He was able to deny the third for quite a while, just through latently defending a lot of these bases. A single High Templar still alive, but not for long. And Aegis now going to be able to move out, and he might even just be able to press forward and attack that 6 o'clock. Naklar potentially aware of it, so staging some troops out. That's leaving a High Templar exposed. The Dragoons... Yeah, everything actually should be able to defend this pretty easily as Aegis overcommitting. And also, maybe, yeah, getting a little bit of damage on the cannons, but not a lot else. Empty side storms once again. The storms have not been on point for Naklar this game. So it looks like at risk of being contained as far as a follow-up, especially because Aegis equal in supply right now. Although plus two weapons has kicked online, as has plus one armor, which means Naklar's units just hit a little bit harder. He's got superior supply. Six o'clock base is getting established as cannons are warping in. Zealot trying to retreat as rapidly as possible. Some Dark Templar queued up, which will be interesting. Minerals looking somewhat thin in Naklar's main, and Aegis starting to queue up more Hydralisks, more Femi, is making his way towards Hive Tech with that third gas. Let's see if he grabs an additional base on top of this. Is Naklar now motioning to grab the 6 o'clock? Aegis just making sure additional bases haven't been grabbed. Yeah, there's the drone. Moving out to go ahead and grab that 12 o'clock, I believe. We'll have to see. A curious lack of lurkers here in the mid-game for Aegis. Especially with Hive Tech being built. I'm assuming we're going to see some Defiler Plague play. There's Lurker Tech finally upgrading. No plus three weapons queued up as well, so Naklar is going to have the upgrade advantage for quite some time. I like the Zerglings. Zergling? There he is. On patrol, bottom right. 
with his hydralis buddy to go ahead and deny additional uh, bases. Some hydralisks making their way forward just to try to scope out. Make sure that there wasn't a fourth grabbed. Aegis grabbing this fourth base as soon as he gets that rolling. Again, puts him in a comfortable position. Sands the uh, upgrade disadvantage here. And actually, much better job queuing troops up because this is a pretty beefy army that Naklar has got that's uh, careening towards this natural expansion. So we're going to see some more action potentially at the natural. Overlord speed has been upgraded, so it should be able to deal with the High Templar, or the Dark Templar, I should say, without too much trouble, assuming they get targeted down first. Not a very cohesive army right now for Aegis. And pretty good cohesion from Naklar as he's sweeping in from the east. A lot of control groups with Hydra is just waiting to absorb this attack force, though. Sidestorm to the south, catching four. Sidestorm catching, looks like, just two. Zealot's eating a little bit of storm there as well. The Overlord doing a good job of dodging out, picking off those Dark Templar. Aegis needs to queue up some troops just to defend his natural, looks like. Now some good side storms as the Hydra is pinned in the defensive situations, and to dodge out of them, they have to eat some Dragoon fire. However, it looks like after all said and done, Aegis still has some Hydralisks remaining, and is doing a great job of focus firing what's left of the Dragoon army. So he's still going to hold. The workers, the worker count has not been the best for Naklar. He's still sitting sub 40 at the 16 minute mark and really doesn't seem to be adding any additional probes uh, to his uh, grouping, which is going to hurt his economy long term, although he's still got a lot of resources out in the bank. That 12 o'clock base is mining pretty well for Aegis, but he hasn't turned around and queued up a lot of Hydralis production to deal with Naklar's army. The Hydralis den once again. Is this going to be another Hydralis den kill? I think we're going to see another Hydralis den kill. Dragoon's engaging the troops to the south. Yeah, he's going to be able to pick off that Hydralis den. Oh, just kidding. So not focus firing it. The Dragoon's now being picked off one by one. Barely. 92 health remaining. Hive tech is up. Which is going to allow for... Uh, Zergling crackling upgrades, additional upgrades from the evolution chambers. It looks like an evolution, a second evolution chamber at least is in place. There's a defiler mound as well. A probe making its way bottom right. It's going to actually just, okay, I was about to say snuck underneath the watchful nose. It's probably Zergling's best uh, sense. I don't know that their eyes, are, especially if you could look at their head right there, they got teeny eyes. So I gotta assume their nose is probably their, um, point being that, that probe being pulled, <laughs> pulling that Zergling away, the Dark Templar looks like it might be able to, to deal with it as it cycles its way back out, but there is a Hydralisk to do some additional dampering of expansions out on the map. Huge amount of lurkers over a control group, now at the natural for Aegis. And once again, a lack of observers from Maklar. He does have the ro robotics someplace, I believe. Maybe? Okay, there's the robo. He went robotic support bay, however. Maybe to go reaver drops? I'll try to keep an eye on that. Or maybe to go for more of a defensive style into the long game. Hydralisk being pushed out by the Dark Templar bottom right. Hydralisk chasing down two Dark Templar mid-map. So both players staging up for more of a, a long-term game. Looks like I missed a Dark Templar getting uh, a kill somewhere in the midst of this. In the upper right-hand corner. Naklar, level 3 weapons, level 2 armor. Very strong upgrades. But not sure that he's going to be able to capitalize on it. Okay, there's the observatory at the very least. Second robotics, so I think he lost track of his robotics. Or he's staging up to produce a lot of reavers. Outside that natural. Aegis, again, not moving a lot of troops away from his main. He is sitting on four bases, so momentarily he has the advantage, but as soon as Naklar is able to get some cannons up bottom right, and in theory, if he drops a robotic facility bottom right and starts producing those Reaver, he'll be in a solid position overall. Also critically, I want to point out this entire match has lacked a Spire, 
and I still believe that a strong Mutalist counterattack could win Aegis the game at this stage just because of the lack of anti-air and mobility to be able to deal with Mutalisks at this stage of the match. Do have a lot of Dragoons out mid-map, however. Zergling finding that large, beefy army mid-map. Uh, still some minerals there for Aegis. It looks like that third is actually mined out, so this is actually going to be two base mining. So it's important that he gets that upper right-hand base up. Main is mined out. Natural expansion is just about mined out for Aegis, so it's critical that he gets his two bases up. This does put some pressure on Aegis to potentially cap that natural expansion to maintain economic relevancy. He's been sitting on a much superior worker count the entirety of this match. However, maybe because of the upgrade discrepancy, hasn't really turned into superior engagements. Does have some defilers out here in the field. Haven't seen any movements to drop a Plague. I believe Plague has already been upgraded. Should've just seen it. Nope, just kidding. Okay, now Plague being upgraded. So Consume's there, Dark Swarm's there, Plague isn't. Should negate a lot of the Dragoons. Supply count's even. Worker count lead for Aegis. Theoretically, that gives him the lead. An Overlord waiting with its eyes for this Dark Templar to arrive. And that should discourage any additional attacks that direction. Maclar initially moving his army, but upon finding a large lurker force there, and again a lack of observers, finally an observer moving up, backing up off that front. If Aegis can pick off this uh, observer, although it would be difficult over the sheer bulk of this army, regardless, if he was able to pick off that observer, I'm not sure that there's a lot Maclar could do. Maclar actually re-engaging shoving the entirety of his army to the 12 o'clock, and that is just going to be overwhelming. Especially because that weapons upgrade is still massive. The Observer a little bit out of position to deal with this Lurker, but that base should die regardless. Maclar repositioning. Pulling right back out. The Lurker's not dropping. Huge side storm. As there is a bit of a traffic jam there for ages. Drones retreating. Looks like the Zelts have pulled out of that 12 o'clock base. Fighting in the Dark Swarm, which isn't helping a lot. The Defiler is getting wiped out. But Observer is right there, and without a lot of support, the Lurker is folding very, very rapidly. Not the best Psy Storm. Actually clearing out more Zealots than I think Zerglings. The Observer did get picked off, and with no support Observers, those Lurkers are going to reign supreme, so Nackler are just going to have to back out. So despite threatening that 12 o'clock and forcing the drones to retreat, is not able to cap that 12 o'clock and wipe it out. And Aegis continues to mine top right. The supply at the end of the day are in Aegis's favor. Aegis now expanding to the nine o'clock and starting to sweep units bottom right. But with his lack of overlords, and I guess he has an overlord nearby, the Dark Templar, good old Dark Templar cannon defense, should hold. Some lurkers look like they were trying to reposition. Not getting a lot done. Oh, and lurkers dying to Dark Templar bottom right. So that full control group of... Lurker is getting wiped out. Aegis is going to have to go back to the drawing board and regroup. Aegis's main is mined out now. Natural expansion... Sorry, his third is mined out. Overlord sweeping across, at least finding Dark Templar. Some Zerglings sweeping in preventatively. Not sure the story there. Not, not a good look here from Naklar, where we have two Reavers that... Uh, I guess that will last a long time at the very least, but two Reavers are blockaded. A shuttle is going to be required to get them out here at the natural expansion, and those Reavers could be very beneficial in other circumstances. More units dying as they're making their way across. Okay, it looks like we do have a Reaver and a shuttle. Here at the third, Naklar not... Okay, so Naklar suddenly up 30 supply. He... If he moves his probes out, which it looks like he has, is, oh, you know, decently saturated across three bases. Aegis hasn't kept it, uh, hasn't kept his economy rolling. Naklar's base is starting to grow. Level 3 armor now, so fully upgraded. And as long as he can get observers along with his attack force, which again are lacking with this army, he can just pin an observer with this. Might be able to breach multiple bases here. Dark Templar running its way top right, dying there. 
trying to look out on the map to see if there's any observers making their way across. Looks like a lack. Yeah, and that's going to make Aegis's position with any amount of lurkers impenetrable. Looks like we do have a single lurker there at the natural. Several lurkers and a spore colony to make it more challenging without the observer sight upgrade. There at the 9 o'clock defending it. High Templar staying alive. So, yeah. And that's going to be the story here for Naklar. Despite having the supply lead, despite having an upgrade lead, he's going to have to penetrate the lurker lines with Psystorm alone. Now has an observer with the grouping. Does need to get to the forward field. Currently just moving around. Not really engaging any of these attract forces. 73 drones for Aegis. And his upgrades are starting to equalize gonna have level three spines in a second zerglings versus reavers reavers oftentimes will win particularly when they have a lot of support instead targeting the hydralis den however once again that hydra he naklar does not like hydralis dens so hydralis den down those two reavers that were trapped at the natural have now regrouped and dark swarm does not do a lot against this many zealots and and this many Reavers. I'm not sure why Naklar is actually backing out. He really does not need to with the attack forces he's got. Big Plague hitting all of these units. Reavers scooping up defensively. Zelt starting to ransack and might be able to wipe out a lot of these bases. Lurkers coming in from the rear. Not able to burrow. Are ending up with some protective fire. Okay, Sidestorm Going to obliterate a lot of their attack forces. The... Just an absolute scattering of troops both directions. This is chaos. Zerglings coming from the rear. Dragoons being defended by Psystorm on the edge. It looks like a few of the Dragoons getting Psystormed as well. The natural expansion's been cleared out. I believe the Hive might go down. I don't know if that's going to be that big a loss. What will be a big hit is losing that evolution chamber up there. I believe working some additional upgrades if they make their way up into the main and also losing the Ultralis Cavern. Oh, the Ultralis Cavern. If he can just rebuild the Ultralis Cavern at another location and the Defiler Mount at an additional location quite rapidly, and he, I believe he has the minerals to do so, he'll be in a fine spot. Looks like he has not yet done so, however. Now the Zealot's marching up. They're going to target that Defiler Mount first. I've actually maybe targeted the Ultralis Cavern uh, first. But yeah, mostly just tech to be lost here. Zerlings trying to stream that direction. Some Ultralisks actually have been produced from Aegis. So this might be sufficient to go ahead and evict the latent troops that are here. And since there was no concentrated fire on any one structure, Aegis is going to hold what he has. Reavers dropping in again. We have a lack of anti-air from Aegis late game, so we can't really stop this shuttle and these Reavers. This is a wild one. So 9 o'clock base mining really well. 12 o'clock as well. Upper right hand base has pretty solid saturation. Gas being grabbed at the natural. So that's 4 base Zerg versus what will soon be 2 base Protoss as that 6 o'clock base looks like it is just about to mine out for Naklar. Looks like the observers remain. The shuttle remains, although it is empty. Not sure if it just... There's the shuttle that has those reavers. And let's see if they were, in fact, picked up. No, those reaver... Okay, one reaver's still there. Maybe that was produced at a later stage in point. I'm going to give Naklar the benefit of the doubt and assume that that was produced at a later stage in point. Regardless, Naklar has a huge bank. Age is starting to grow his bank. He has managed to defend his main. But with the Ultralis upgrades maxed out... A lot of Ultralisks out on the field, not a lot of other units. With some Plague support, Aegis could take this. However, Naklar's engagements have been a little bit more solid in this match, although albeit chaotic. Dark Templar do a lot of damage, by the way, and are still me melee units. It looks like Naklar checking out that 3 o'clock, noticing that he was spotted and backing right back out. All right, the beefy boys looking for an opportunity. A Dragoon trying to sweep out an Overlord there. Zerglings making their way across mid-map. Ultralis checking 
three o'clock finding nothing, and it looks like he wants to go ahead and sweep and maybe attack, and so it might be an exchange. Naklar wants to try to defend that bottom right, so this is going to be a gruesome battle in the middle. Both armies missing each other somehow. Exterior base being grabbed right there, which is exposed as well. You can see how quickly Dark Templar actually get through Ultralists. Dark Swarm being dropped. Not sure that's going to be all that helpful, but the Ultralists just doing so much damage and wiping out all of these attack forces, and I think that might be it. That might have been the movement that has swung things solidly in Aegis's favor. Eight Ultralists on the field. Two Dragoons remain from that attack force, and now Naklar has to worry as there's near max supply. Okay, the Reavers at the very least. One being dropped nearby. Still no anti-air. It looks like the Ultralist Cavern was built defensively, so might be able to get some at least time bought. The Zerglings not going to defend currently. The Ultralist remaining idle mid-map. Scrambling all over the place, which is allowing the entire drone line to get obliterated top right. And again, still no anti-air. The Heidelstein wasn't replaced. So the, the Ultras just have to sit and watch. What a sight for that Reaver, right? Okay, there's a single Heidelist here to the north. Reaver being redropped, but this is two bases that have been now been denied. And all of these Ultralisks are being preoccupied by this single shuttle. This is... How many how many Ultralisks is this? That's 10 Ultralisks. That's a full control group of Ultralisks that are now trying to deal with a single shuttle and a Reaver. And that's honestly the only thing that's keeping Naklar in this match at the moment. As the 6 o'clock is mined out, he needs to get those probes to another location. He's mining off two bases versus Aegis's four. Aegis is max. Naklar down 60 supply. Shuttle still. And yet, no, no spire as well. There's the spire finally at the 12 o'clock. But I don't know that it's necessary to worry about this shuttle when you have this many Ultralisks. Just A-move them. As soon as these are A-moved into any of Naklar's bases, that will be game. Although, maybe not. Because the Archon count growing bottom left, Archons fare fairly well against Ultralisks. That is what you want, is Psystorm and, and Archons. So net, although this is just so many, I don't know. This is just too many Ultralisks, I think. Too many Ultralisks. This is over a full control group of Ultralisks and growing. Shuttle now providing scouting information mid-map. And we can see it spread at least across two control groups there. So they're going to move up, barrel into the Archons at the front. This is a glorious battle right here. Archons starting to move forward. They are going to have the Reaver support, and that might be enough to negate a lot of that advantage. And yeah, the Ultralisk is absolutely melting. I think Maclar got a little, or I would say Aegis got a little bit overconfident there or something. So now retreating with his Ultralisks. This is once again where actually a sweep of Mutalisks could be game-ending. As there's Archons that are anti-air, but not a lot of anti-air otherwise on the map for Naklar. Aegis is maxed, but the plus three Archons with the Reaver support have done a great job of melting these Ultralisks in open field. The Hydralist then hasn't been replaced to help deal with the Archons. There's not a lot of Lurkers out in the field currently. Sunk Colony is being dropped top right. I'm not sure why. Aegis refusing to attack. Again, just kind of going for a sealed defensive style. Naklar proceeding forward. Still doesn't grab that th that uh, 3 o'clock base, nor the base to the bottom left. A single Zergling burrow there, potentially denying it. More Ultralisks there from the left. Another epic battle. Mid-map. However, the Archons with their splash damage, and again, that Reaver Scarab support, absolutely obliterating, melting the Ultralisk lines. But it looks like it is potentially not enough, as the Archon count has finally dwindled, and there's still Ultralisks remaining. Aegis hurting for gas, however. 
is going to have to rely on Zerglings now. In the late game, Zealots streaming across to engage and still a 40 supply lead there from Aegis. Keep in mind about 20 of that supply is differentiated between both armies. Lurkers, again without observer support, going to be softened up. They're not long for life. Yeah, dying as they're trying to flee. Foolhardy. Drones being transferred. It looks like the top right. Actually doing a great job of blockading that Zealot momentarily mid-map. So Zealot scurrying. Now, not enough reinforcements potentially to defend that top left. Or that bottom left, I should say. There's still Reavers in that shuttle. A couple Hydralisks are out to maybe... And a bunch of Zerglings being produced. To do a group attack, potentially. Aegis very confidently grabbing that third outside of that bottom right hand establishment. Moving his way towards the natural. More side storm. The Reavers don't have support. However, they do have shuttles. And again, a complete lack of anti air. They do need to land to be able to fire the shots, however. And now Aegis finally sweeping in and clearing out bottom left where a lot of tech was located. And I, I believe this is going to be the GG moment. Especially with the robotic support bay falling. Complete lack of observers with the robotics facility offline. So Naklar has no detection. It looks like he's gonna go for a counterattack in the top right with Archons and Zealots. But again, lack of observer here. So, the Lurkers can just reposition and wipe that out. And if it's a base race situation, Aegis has more territory all over and Zerglings take down buildings too rapidly. Yeah, the Lurkers now repositioning. The Archons fleeing from that location. And it looks like... I think that's going to be it. That should be GG... For Naklar, Aegis taking the victory and advancing. Since his tournament life is on the line, it looks like he's going to pull off probes and go for one last... I'm not sure if these are being sent to Distance Mine or if they're going to be part of the, the last attack. I, I would love to see that as kind of like the last hurrah. Reaver now being supported once again, which is making short work of the Ultralisks mid-map. However, the stream of units that were bottom left are starting to make their way out. Macklar's actually in the red. Looks like the probes were just being sent to the bottom right to continue mining. The main in the bottom right just about mined out. And there was GG. Aegis takes it and will advance to the round of 16. Again, if you uh, enjoy my commentary, please give a like and subscribe to people on YouTube land. Appreciate all of you. Thank you for listening.